that part of the planet that covers more than 70% of the Earth's surface is home to at least a million different creatures. And those are the ones that we know about, since 80% of the seas are unexplored. In the oceans, life ranges from the largest animal in the world, the blue whale, that lives alongside tiny zooplankton made up of animals so small you can't see them without a microscope. The diversity, size, colouring and range of each individual sea creature varies infinitely and it continues when we consider that some live on or very near to the surface, whereas others live at the bottom of the deepest parts of the sea, such as the 36,000 foot deep Mariana Trench and the Challenger Deep which lies at the bottom of that. Uh, this being deeper than Everest is high on land, where pressures are extreme, light non-existent, and who knows what lives there. All part of God's magnificent creation. The psalmist refers to the deep in utter awe, the same awe expressed in the Psalms and elsewhere when talking of the cosmos and creation power. Just as our human minds find it difficult to take in the enormity of space, so too that difficulty is experienced when thinking of the size of the oceans and the diversity of life that came from creation power. Wherever we are, whatever the creature, our omnipresent God is the source of it all and cares for it. In Psalm 139, David recognises that when he says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. Shifting the emphasis a little, such creatures that are there right at creation, when we learn from Genesis 1.20 that God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which water teems and moves about within it, and humankind was given the command to rule over the fishes of the sea. Uh, Genesis 1.28, very important word, rule. At that time humanity was given neither flesh nor meat to eat, the diet being strictly vegan. vegan. Uh, but following the flood, we read in Genesis 9.3, everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. Just as I gave you green plants, I now give you everything. And so we became a part of the food chain that starts with the minute plankton that's eaten by slightly bigger creatures, but in their turn are eaten by slightly bigger creatures and which is food ultimately for us. Thereafter, Fish, fishing and fishermen are essential to the biblical narrative, not only in the provision of food and sustenance to men and women, relying on the goodness of God's provision, but also in the promotion and furtherance of the word of God in the Old Testament, and to the promotion of the gospel and the new covenant in the New Testament. We think of stories involving a big fish, a whale, of the calling of the first four disciples, fishermen all, uh, the part played by fish in feeding at first 5,000, then 4,000. And we read stories, stories of, of fish bursting nets. In its way, and from our perspective, well, the creatures of the sea provide a valuable source of our food. The provision is from God and it's self-regulating provision. For the sea creatures in whom we're interested primarily, are we required to labour long hours to ensure this provision comes about? Absolutely not. It's a gift from God given to us out of his love for us. What are we required to do in order to ensure the provision continues to full effect? Well, the answer is to rule. Nothing more than proper and adequate stewardship or rule by ensuring that the stocks are properly looked after and their environments protected. Do we succeed in doing this? No. Whether the threat to our sea creatures comes from climate change with global warming or pollution of our seas through chemical industrial or plastic waste, we've neglected our duty to, to protect God's good provision through the seas as assuredly as we have on land, where we've destroyed whole tracts of rainforests and continue to do so in South America at the rate of several football pitches per day, and to take but one example. On the seas, it's reckoned that around 3,000 containers fell off ships last year. Many of these do not sink initially, but sit just below the surface thanks to air trapped inside them. And then they sink gradually to the bottom where they sit deteriorating until salt water gets to whatever they contain and when they do fish and sea creatures are destroyed wholesale. Coral reefs are being decimated by global warming brought about by a wholesale failure to steward God's planet, sea temperatures rising and other activities which pollute our seas such as oil spills and leaks. I remember a few years ago reading of a whale 
that ingested so many pollutants in Canada's 744-mile long St. Lawrence River that it died of industrial poisoning. And its bizarre cause for the death was discovered in post-mortem. Perhaps you'll remember the famous picture of a humpback whale tail fin out of the water as it was diving deep in open waters. The picture bears the caption, he roams in freedom with no enemy save man. And that was quite chilling at the time and it still is. We have great responsibility given to us by God the Father to preserve and nourish our environment. It was made perfect and we've corrupted that perfection by a process of uncaring and unthinking industrialization going back some centuries. We've heedlessly and needlessly destroyed habitats and species and put their very survival into danger, even in the deepest and most remote seas where the pollution washes. The lessons are obvious, and thankfully there are many governments now walking, working towards a better and clearer planet, one with clean air, clean waters and improved habitats for those with whom we share God's creation, because we cannot stand alone uh, as a species that does not depend upon every other species that God has put here for us. Whether they are successful, only time will tell. Through the creatures of the sea, as well as those on land, including our species, humanity, we can and must learn better stewardship for us all on the planet we call Earth.